What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we're going to go ahead and draw this really fun crystal design. As always there's links to everything you're going to need in the description below the palette and any brushes that I've used as well as the screen canvas size. And if you're new here I post weekly tutorials so hit that subscribe button and if you didn't already know I post three more exclusive tutorials every single month over on my Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description down below if you want to go ahead and check that out and all the designs that you unlock when you become a patron. So with all that said let's get started. So once you have your canvas, the first thing we're going to do is go up to our colors and right up here in the top right, there's this very light sort of lilac color. And we're going to go ahead and drag that onto the empty layer on the screen. What we're then going to do is just add a very quick gradient there in the background. So we're going to go to our layers and create another new layer. We're going to go to our colors then and we're going to go ahead and grab this second color on the top row. So second color on that top row Then grab your selection tool. And using the rectangle option and making sure color fill is turned on we're going to go ahead and draw in a big box of color at the top and then we'll switch to the ellipse if we zoom out of our canvas we're just going to create a bit of an ellipse down here so we get a little bit of a rounded shape at the bottom here which is going to arguably act as our floor and if we let go of that tap on your selection tool we can then go to our adjustments gaussian blur and we can swipe from left to right just to blur this out and this will give us a nice soft really soft background so something really large around about sort of 80% will do the trick and then tap on your adjustments when you're done and if you want to you could go to this layer we just added the color in and maybe just lower the opacity down just a smidge maybe down to say 70% that's all down to preference though what we now need to do is go ahead and create the shapes so let's go ahead and go to our layers and create a new layer we're going to go to our colors and we're going to double tap at the bottom of the disk first of all to select black we're then going to go to our brush library and under inking we're going to use the syrup brush now the brush size is currently set to about 12 percent and first of all we're going to draw this shape here so the front one that you can see there from my initial stencil so starting at the bottom we're just going to create sort of a rounded potato kind of shape but make sure you add some nice bumps in there which are going to act as the crystals so i'm going to start at the bottom here and just create with a little bit of flexible pressure up and down just create that initial shape going all the way up and then coming round on ourselves a little bit creating some nice bumps and lumps in here where you can try not to make them too rounded where possible and we're going to go ahead and link that up at the very bottom then we're going to drag our color in if you hold down just to make sure you fill it nicely there we go we've got our first shape done and then we're going to create the back half here so we're going to go to our layers and create another new layer and drag it underneath the black layer we just created and then we'll go to our colors and we're going to go ahead and grab this color here so it's the third column from the right in the middle and this is going to be the back of the shape so we're just going to create a nice sort of rocky floor area and then the back rock just run that all the way up into your start point and then go all the way around and link it up and then drag and drop your color in like so and there you got the back half of your little crystal we now need to go ahead and add in the border here of the crystal where it's been cut through so we're going to go to our layers and above our little black potato shape here, we're going to go ahead and create a new layer and we're going to tap on this layer and clipping mask it. And then we're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab this color here in the top left of our palette. So this one here in the top left. And then we're going to go ahead and continuing with the exact same brush, we're going to go ahead and create a basic shape that pretty much mimics this outer edge here. So I'm going to start down here and just create our little crystal -y shapes and you can go up and down here, create some nice big crystals where you want to. The only thing you really need to sort of bear in mind is as we get over towards this left side, they probably need to be a little bit thinner, so a little bit closer to the sides because of perspective. But once you go all the way around, you can then drag and drop your color into the outer edge and that is your front area here. So make sure you're happy with it at this point. I recommend if you tap on your eraser and maybe go to calligraphy and say use the monoline brush, you can reduce the brush size of this and maybe just sort of chop into these edges and just erase what you don't like, make some different shapes. So just go ahead and just tinker with your shape until you're happy with it. And then we can progress on with the rest of the design. So I recommend maybe creating some nice flat chops across some of these points, maybe even make some a little bit more angular, but we can chop into them and then make nice little cuts across the tips of them, which will make it look like 
they've been chopped right into. So we've got all the basic shapes we now need in order to start adding in color. So let's do exactly that. Let's go down to our base shape, which is this black area here. We're gonna tap on the layer and we're gonna alpha lock it. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab this color here, first of all, the second color on that top row and drag and drop it into the shape. We're then gonna go ahead and go to our brush library. We're gonna to go to airbrushing and the soft brush. And we're gonna switch our color out then to the third color on that top row. And we're gonna start introducing a nice gradient of color. So let's make our brush size roughly around about sort of 12 to 15%. This down here is the darkest area, so we can pretty much start there and just in a circular motion, just continue to blend that color out until you leave a little bit of that lighter tone just on the edges up here. We don't want too much of that lighter tone, mind, but just a little bit closer up there. So we're creating a really nice gradient then let's go to our colors and repeat the steps again, but for this like blue color here, so it's the fourth color on that top row. And again, in this area down here, circular motion, and then just blend that color out. And if you're not too happy with your gradient, you can always go up to your adjustments, Gaussian blur, and swipe from left to right, and that will blend your colors in. But I'm gonna leave mine as it was, but that's just a little tip there for you. And then we're gonna to go to our colors once more and grab the final color, which is this one here on the top row, the fifth color, and just add a little bit more of a darker tone here on the right-hand side. That's all we need to do there. We've got a nice wrap around of the color. Let's then move to this back area here and add in the basic colors for that too. So we're gonna to go to our layer, and this is the layer for the back area. We're gonna tap on it, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna alpha lock it. And then we're gonna to go to our brush library, and under airbrushing still, we're gonna use the medium brush this time, but we're gonna lower the opacity down to 65%. The brush size is currently set to roughly around about sort of 4%. That looks pretty good to me. And then we're gonna to go to our colors, and this collection of colors here is this area that we're working in. So we're gonna grab the first color, which is the fourth column from the right, this color here. And just around the edge here, around the very sort of uh, top side, we're just gonna add in some brown. So we're just gonna sort of scoop round. You can overlap on yourself a few times. And because we set the opacity a bit lower, by doing that, we can kind of like create lots of sort of random thinner layers in here of color that are just gonna layer on top of each other. So we start off with a little bit of brown. We then move into this dark color here. So the second color, which is actually the base color. So we could probably skip that for now. We're then gonna go straight to the third color in this little collection. So second column from the right, this color here. And we're gonna wrap this color around the back end of the rock. So I'm just going around that back edge. Again, because our pressure is nice and light and the opacity is a little bit lower, we can actually just sort of layer this on top of itself multiple times and create lots of random little streaks and whatnot in the back area here. And we wanna leave like a thin line of black just before we get to that sort of maroon color. And then we're gonna switch our color out finally to the far right column, middle color, and then add in the brightest tone towards the right hand side and just wrap that round at the top a little bit and a little bit towards the bottom too, just the tiniest bit. Because your opacity is lower, you can do that nice and easily and blend them all together. And while we're here, let's just simply carry on and add in some of the textures. So we're gonna to go to our colors and double tap at the bottom of the disk to select black. We do need to go ahead and create a new layer. So let's create a new one and tap on it and clip it to that shape. We're then gonna to go to our brush library and we're gonna go ahead and go all the way to the bottom and under industrial, we're gonna go ahead and use this one here, the twisted tree brush. The opacity is set to 100% and the brush size is set to about six. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna coat the whole design top to bottom in one continuous motion. So keep going up and down, give it a good nice coat of the texture. And if we zoom in, we've got this awesome little pattern going on inside there. But to make this sort of come to life, we actually go to the layer and swipe it to the left and duplicate it. And then we tap on the layer and we invert it to white. Then we're gonna go ahead and go to our cursor and we're gonna go ahead and just move this up a few pixels. So you might need to zoom out of your canvas, but we're gonna go ahead and tap a few times up here. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and then tap on your cursor when you're done. And now you'll start to see your highlight edge now has a shadowed side underneath, which is the original pattern. Now don't worry about this sort of detailing so far, because we need to go ahead and add in some highlights and shadows on top. But let's change both of these layers of the texture by tapping on the N to overlay. And then likewise, the shadow one as well, tap on the N and change it to overlay. 
and now it will start to sort of fit in a little bit more with our color scheme but let's add some sort of generic shadows and highlights to this so let's go ahead and create one more layer let's tap on the layer and clipping mask it we're going to go to our brush and we're going to go to airbrushing and the soft brush again the brush size could do with being a little bit smaller maybe around about sort of five percent and with black selected we're going to go ahead and shadow up the bottom side so i'm actually going to make my brush size a little bit bigger than that about eight percent shadow up the bottom side here we're going to wrap that shadow around the back area of the rock like so so this is already starting to come to life a lot more and we're going to push that shadow around the back end of the rock up here because we're going to put a little shadow on the floor in a second then go to your colors and just grab this color here in the top left of our palette, slightly off white. And we're just gonna very, very lightly just brighten up that top edge, just where the lighting's just coming around the tiniest bit. And then also we'll just add in a little bit of a lighter tone just underneath our sort of crystal edge here and blend those colors in a little bit more. And that's it, that's the back end of the rock now done. We can focus on the inside. So let's go to our layers. If you want to, to save on your layer count, you could pinch all four of those layers together that we were just working on for the back area, but that's only if you want to. You can maybe leave them undone if you've got the extra layers available. Now let's go ahead and work on the inside. So we're gonna go up to our layers and we're gonna make sure we're tapped on our little base layer there. And we're gonna create another new layer and it'll clip itself automatically. We're going to add in the first lot of crystals. So we're going to go up to our colors and we're going to grab this color here at the top of the second column. We're then going to go to our brush library and for the first time we're going to use the free bokeh collection and we're going to use bokeh 5 here. Now we want to set our opacity to around about sort of 75% and we want our brush size just initially just to be around about sort of 4%. We're going to add in a light coat around the left side, so almost like a C shape, and we're going to let that sort of round off. If it goes into here, it's no problem. We're going to start sort of here and just go round on ourselves a couple of times. And don't be afraid to add some in the darker areas, that is fine. It will just add in some really nice levels of overlay. So once you've given it a nice light coating, such as this, we then can move on to the next layer. And it's very much a process of building up the color. So we're going to go to our layers now and we're going to create another new layer. We're going to go ahead and change our color this time. And we're going to grab this color here, so the fifth color on the top row. And we're going to do the opposite of this, where we're going to start in the center and blend it outwards. So we're going to start down here and just start to blend out our darker areas. And if you get some nice overlap in there, it's all good. It's creating a lot of dimension by doing that. So we've got some nice dark tones in here. But we've got a nice overlap of all those little colors starting to build up. And we can as well, don't be afraid just to add in the lightest sort of coat just around the outer edges here, just the tiniest little bit, just to maybe break up those edges a little bit more and maybe a little bit more towards the top. Let's then go ahead and move on to the next layer, which is gonna be a layer where we're starting to add in some more highlights. So we're gonna create a new layer and change its layer option from normal to overlay. We're then gonna to go to our colors and then we're gonna grab this color here, the middle color in the first column. And then we're gonna add in some more light source on this left-hand side again. So maybe reduce our brush size down to about 3% this time. And in a C shape again, just start to go round, overlap on yourself, that looks awesome. And let's then do another light coat, just moving inwards a tiny bit. And don't be afraid just to sort of wrap around at the bottom, adding in some more color. And then we're gonna move on to some of the really glossy sides that are facing out from our crystal. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new layer. We're gonna change its layer effect though from normal, we're gonna change it to add. We're then gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab this color here at the bottom of the fourth column. So this color here. And we're gonna use this quite sparingly. We're just gonna just sort of just stroke a tiny bit here and there. And you can see straight away, we're gonna be adding in some really beautifully bright areas that are nicely facing our light source. So just a few little sprinkles here and there. Not too many, but not too little. And then we're gonna go ahead and go to our layers again, create one more layer and change its layer effect again from normal to add. Then grab your colors and we're gonna switch it out to this color here, the bottom of the fifth column. In exactly the same fashion, but again, a bit more sparingly. These are our biggest highlights. So it's the final layer on the inside. We're gonna add in some extra little areas here that are gonna sort of almost appear white, but they are gonna be our brightest areas of our design. So quite sparingly, 
but just the odd little sprinkle of them on the inside. Maybe even reduce your brush size down to say 2% and maybe just add in some sort of very bright ones with a good amount of pressure specifically where you want them. So you can just tap around a few times and just add in some nice bright edges. And these are our really glistening highlights. Look how cool that all looks. Now let's go ahead and work on the outside. And this is where it will all bring it nicely together and we'll add some sparkles afterwards. We're gonna go ahead and go to the layer above what we were just working on, which is actually this surround here. We're gonna go ahead and tap on the layer. We're gonna go ahead and alpha lock it so we can only paint within it. We're then gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna start layering on a few different tones. So we're gonna start off with the third color here on the top row, so third color. Make your brush size back to about sort of 3% and just simply gloss all the way around. So we're gonna start adding in lots of different layers that are just gonna build up on themselves. This is like a foundation layer. So we're going round a few times. This will create some nice little bits of color that we can sit on top of. Let's then switch our color out and move into the correct color. So this third color at the bottom of the first column. And I'm gonna reduce my brush size just a smidge to 2% and just start to overlay onto the top of this which is now gonna to start to really merge your sort of purples into the pinks. So I'm going over myself a few times, just randomly letting the brush do all the work, creating those really pretty sort of crystals. I'm gonna keep going around. Then we're gonna go ahead and go to our colors and switch it out to the middle color in the first column. These are brighter tones again. And just keep running this around again, overlapping. We're slowly starting to chisel away a little bit at the purple that was originally placed on there, but we're leaving a nice amount of sort of break up in colors. This is like you're almost looking through all the crystals and see all the colors within it. We're then gonna switch it out to the top color in the first column. And again, let's just reduce the brush size just a tiny bit to a smaller 2% and run this all the way over the sort of top edge back in one big loop. So it's already adding a really nice sort of crystal look to the outside. But let's then go to our layers and we're gonna go ahead and create a new layer. We're gonna tap on the layer and clipping mask it also. So it's in this big stack. But this layer we were just working on, which is the uh, surround, we're gonna go ahead and tap on this layer and we're gonna select the shape of it. We're gonna make sure we turn off color fill. We're then gonna go ahead and go to our layer that we just made, tap on it and mask it. So now it will now not let us paint in the middle again and it's gonna kind of allow us to layer on top of this shape around the outside. So tap on your selection tool when you're done. And then on this layer, we need to make sure we're on the layer and not the mask. So this is the mask and if we tap on the layer, we're gonna change the layer effect from normal and we're gonna change it to overlay. And then we're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab the middle color out of this five, so the top of the third column. And then we're gonna to go to our brush library. We're gonna go ahead and use the soft brush under airbrushing and the brush size is about 5% and we're just gonna simply go around the right hand edge and left hand side and just sort of just add in a little overlay of color which is just gonna bring out some of those extra colors. So we're gonna go all the way around. We're gonna go around that left hand side too and it's just gonna again, bring out some of the little bits of purple and pinks that we painted in there and that's just gonna bring them out a little bit more but leaving that nice white, very bright crisp edge. Now we wanna go ahead and just make this sort of stand off a little bit from the inside. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and go to our layers and we're gonna create a new layer and drag it underneath the layer that's got the circular shape around the outside, so this layer here. And on that layer, we're gonna change the layer effect from normal, we're gonna change it to linear burn. We're gonna carry on with the exact same color, but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna sort of go around this left-hand side just sort of brushing in a very light shadow around that side. That's gonna allow it to sort of stand off from the background a little bit more. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a minor adjustment, whereas if we go to our layers and we go down to our base layer, now we've added our shadow in, our base layer, if we tap on it, and we go to our colors and grab this top left color, we wanna make sure the white of the outside area transitions nicely into the pink. So I'm just gonna very lightly just sort of paint in a tiny lighter coat just around that left-hand side which is just gonna transition the colors nicely. And now let's go ahead and add in a shadow and some sparkles. So let's go to our layers. We're gonna go down to the little gradient we made in the background and we're gonna create another new layer. We're gonna go ahead and go to our colors and we're gonna grab this color here, the fifth color on that top row. We're gonna to go to our selection tool. We're gonna to go to ellipse and color fill. 
and we're going to go ahead and draw in a very sort of flat ellipse, something a little bit like this. And then tap on your selection tool when you're done. And then we're going to sort of blur it and push it around a little bit. So we're going to go to motion blur under adjustments and swipe to the left hand side just to push and diffuse that shadow just a little bit. Try not to go off of the edge here though at all. And we want to make sure when you do that, you go nice and horizontal. And then we're going to tap on our adjustments and then we're going to tap on it again and go to Gaussian Blur. And we're going to swipe from left to right, which will just nicely diffuse this a little bit more. So it's going to nicely sit on the ground. So something around about sort of 8 to 10% will do the trick. I'm going to go for 8% on this one just to keep a nice solid shape. And then grab your cursor and just maybe position it just ever so slightly off to the right a little bit more. And tap on your selection tool when you're done. Now we've got a nice shadow there. Next, let's go ahead and add in some flares just to really sort of make this really nice and bright. So we're going to go to our layers and we're going to go ahead and find our base layer here. And then all the layers that are clipped above that are the inside that will all sit under this frame here on the outside edge. Once you get to the frame, we're going to go ahead and create a new layer that sits underneath it. And then tap on your layers and change the layer effect to add. We're then going to go to our colors and we're going to grab the color in the top left of the palette. So this nice light color. And we're going to go to our brush library and under luminance at the bottom we're going to use the flare brush now while we're on the inside here we're going to have the flare brush set to about sort of seven percent and you just want to take a look at where your lighter areas are and just add in some nice little flares so we could pop one on here we've definitely got a nice light area there which looks really nice we can add one back here so just a little flare on there too and you just want to sort of Pop a few in there just to really make it look nice and bright and crystally, and maybe even pop another one down here too. Let's then go to our layers. We're going to go right to the top and create another new layer. We're going to change this layer effect from normal and we're going to change this one to vivid light. So we're going to scroll down until we get to vivid light. And then we're going to change our color just to the slightly more pink color here. So the second color in that first column. We're going to go ahead and add in some flares again so you can maybe make these ones a bit bigger about sort of 15 percent and we're going to tap away adding in some sort of flares that will just sort of sit around the outside and i'll pop one down here too this looks really cool though like here where the flare runs into some of the other colors and you get these much more brighter colors in the actual flare design it looks really cool maybe even pop one say here too and i think we'll just go ahead and reduce the brush size down maybe to say six percent and just pop in some nice smaller ones here and there. Just a few, just to nicely brighten up the edges and make it look really nice and bright and crystally. And then if we pinch with two fingers and we go full screen with four, we end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. As always, be sure to come and share your designs with me over on Instagram. I'll leave a link to all my socials down there. And if you didn't already know, I post weekly tutorials here on my YouTube channel, but I also post three more tutorials every single month over on my Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description down below if you want to go and check that out and all the designs that you unlock when you become a patron. And today's equipment list, as always, is the Sketchboard Pro that you can always use code JOELCREATE to get yourself a nice 10% off. I'm currently using the Doudreau screen cover and the Doudreau glove. Links to everything will be in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.